your host Tony. Um, I'm from Financial Juice. If you if you're not sure of who I am already, uh, and I work as the head financial analyst for Financial Juice for the service. So Bank of England, the the rate the expectations that we have for today. We're expecting we're expecting a 25 base point hike from the Bank of England uh, that has has been expected from the rest of the markets as well but let's what I'm going to do is run through what the bank rate is why it's important and what are the effects are of it on the the markets uh, some of the sentiment and views that investment banks have and then we'll also look at the market reactions of what we had prior on the prior releases but uh, let's uh, kick, go, go right into it here uh, for, for you guys. And so what we can so what is the bank rate? So the rate, uh, it is the rate that the bank pays interest to commercial banks. So consider it like the deposit rate from the ECB, where the ECB deposit rate is where they would pay interest uh, to banks for holding money in uh, the central bank. Next point is, so why is it important? So high rates usually are, are done to slow down growth or to make sure that inflation doesn't get too much out of hand. Uh, so that's one of the key issues that the Bank of England has at the moment with inflation being quite high and above their 2% target. Usually uh, lower rates. So lower rates support and uh, support and create growth. It, of course, when we had the pandemic, uh, even when we had the pandemic kicking off, the bank rate was reduced to to zero point one zero percent, or about ten basis points, to foster, uh, first of all, to foster the to foster banks to be able to uh, loan out cash or loan out uh, loan out money to consumers and also to anyone else or of course if you've got a mortgage and you've got uh, the and you don't have any and you don't have any income coming in uh, that also makes the mortgage rate cheaper and then also for credit as well if you're borrowing money then the bank rate being reduced to 0.10% helps foster the credit uh, area so you're able to so consumers are able to borrow more to offset the uh, pandemic woes of not first of all probably being laid off a majority of people being laid off and not being able to have the funds available or enough funds available um, before the government had decided to provide a stimulus and and uh, money to uh, people looking for work um, that is that's the main reason why uh, lower rates had supported and helped to create growth which it did uh, to to a degree with as said inflation uh, being quite high and gdp figures also coming back to the uh, being stronger as well and then you also have wage growth that started to tick back up um, after the economy started to recover from the pandemic bear in mind you also had brexit issues as well where um where there was the issue of of making a deal or getting a deal done which uh, Boris Johnson's famous words of get Brexit done um, <laughs> so there's also that too now with the bank rate today has said we're looking for a 25 base, base point hike to 0.75% from the prior of 0.50% which should bring us back to pre-pandemic levels uh, where the rate was beforehand at 0.75% so looking for a return to normal or no, some form of normalcy with the Bank of England and, and, their, and their point of view of where the economy is headed. Okay, next point. So where is the economy at the moment? So the unemployment rate is at 3.9% versus the prior of 4.1% employment change at for the for the prior month that we had uh, for data which was actually showing for the employment change which represented uh, January rather than February so the employment change then had shown about a 12k uh, drop but it was better than the prior figure of minus 38k so seeing that employment uh, was coming back uh, was becoming stronger not as strong in January but we did see 
uh, that, that it was it was it wasn't as bad as it was compared to uh, the December data that we had seen on the prior report. Inflation uh, at nearly thirty year highs at five point five percent, of which uh, versus the prior of five point four percent. So again, nearly a thirty year high, and that's forecast according to economists to reach eight percent with it within this year and likely to remain quite high and elevated throughout the year uh, and also part way of 2023. UK average weekly earnings which came in at 4.8% versus the prior 4.3% so wages are back on uh, on the rise as well in the UK and then you have the 2021 Q4 GDP data that we had received where actually there was a slight decline not even though a 0.1% difference uh, is quite big for the UK and in regards to GDP growth overall for any economy so we had seen about 1% for, for, for Q4 again so there was a slowdown uh, in growth at the end of last year well, in the final quarter for, for the UK. And the GDP year-on-year prelim uh, data came in at 6.5% versus the prior of 6.8%. So again, a slowdown in GDP figures, or in GDP overall gross domestic product, uh, gross domestic product um, from what we had seen from the UK. Uh, the ONS, when we're looking at, in, when we look at wages and also inflation uh, as well, so the ONS, the Office for National Statistics, said that the annual growth in regular pay, excluding bonuses, fell by 1% in the three months to January after adjusting for its preferred measure of inflation, which was the biggest fall since July 2014. So we're seeing, although we had weekly average earnings uh, for, the, for the month of January, showing to, showing to be coming in at 4.8%, and seeing an increase there overall in the three months to the end of the quarter. Yeah. In actual fact, there was a 1% drop in the three months to January when we adjusted for inflation. So there's, first of all, so overall employment is is good. Uh, employment is strong. GDP isn't, wasn't as strong as it was in the fourth quarter. And wages overall uh, showing to be seeing a decline. So one thing I wanted to see I want to have a look at is this FT uh, piece or FT uh, bar chart which shows UK households bracing brace for for big income squeeze so this is representing the annual real change percent in median equivalized household disposable income so what they see here that with high inflation that uh, according to the resolution foundation which uh, measures or has created this report it shows that with high inflation that is the annual real change in income for uk households uh, is expected to be quite low or expected to drop back to what we can see here back to around 1982 levels of what they're expecting so that's quite um that's quite <laughs> that's quite negative if we're considering where wages are headed that we're seeing a slow really a reverse in growth for uk wages which means that if the bank uh, raises their interest rates and uh, other uh, commercial banks or of course uh, raise raise their rates then that means it will cost more to to borrow from those commercial banks and in in turn for consumers the higher the borrowing costs and the, the less they're inclined to uh, take out credit and and loans the only issue being at the moment as said inflation being at nearly 30 highs the bank uh, the bank the only way the bank can control inflation or the biggest way they can control inflation at the high end is to increase rates in order to hamper or slow down the inflation rate from overshooting too much now remember as i said that 5.5 percent is still above the bank of england's two percent target range of where they feel uh, as do other central banks feel that inflation uh, is at two percent is the appropriate level for the economy overall where we're seeing not too much uh, inflation 
and not too low inflation whether according to them and other central banks that's that's the steady point or that's the equilibrium as does they would like to say uh is everyone good so far how how, how are we doing are we who is currently watching who is listening in who's who is actually going to trade the bank of england interest rate decision today or are we going to kind of do a sit uh, a, a, a wait and watch a scenario and then kind of see how the how the how Sterling reacts, and also the FTSE 100, how that reacts. Who have we got listening in? So if you're all good with what I've said so far, uh, do just, just let me know in, in chat. Uh, make sure, Just let me know that you've understood what, I, what I've said. If there is anything that you don't understand and you want me to go over, do let me know. And when I see the message pop up in the in the chat, uh, then I, I will go through that and go over it again. Okay, so whilst we wait for any comments or any questions, uh, well, let's move on. So the next point is with energy. So this has been quite a key thing since the Russia-Ukraine conflict, where the, and also before the Russia-Ukraine conflict had, had occurred, uh, we have the increase in the price cap or energy bills. So the first thing here, so energy bills or the price cap for that, the average uh, price had increased, has seen an increase of about, or is seen increase of about £693 to £1,971 per year. So the reason why the energy price cap had been brought in, according to the government and their, and their view, is that with the energy markets where it's harder to uh, get a hold of of uh, of these resources needed to power homes and also to uh, to provide any uh, any energy to businesses that they use that uh, because it's been harder to get a hold of that has led to the, the government deciding right we've got to increase the prices we've got to increase the price of energy that people pay for but they've done it by quite a significant amount we've we had that uh those those comments that that come through from from the government which caused uh, a negative sentiment for the uk economy where in where they're expecting if the price cap is increased then of course that means that inflation is 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 their main concern where that everyone's paying higher amount of energy so that would also play in the hands of inflation as well and that story there now what has the government tried to do to try and combat that that issue of not not having enough supply well you've had back you've had boris johnson or bojo who visited the united arab emirates yesterday but according to them and saudi officials uh, they came back empty handed and they said it was quite a tough negotiation to try and talk to to the united uh, to the saudis and the united arab emirate officials uh, as well so what this means is that one if the the uk is uh, and the reason why the boris johnson went to uh, to the united arab emirates is because of companies putting bans on russian uh, companies that provides that provide energy to uh, the, the uk and because of that, there's a loss of supply. So hence, we had seen Boris Johnson go to the UAE to try and see if he could get a deal to, uh, to try and make up that loss and make sure that people and consumers are not paying too much for their energy, as we can see with this price cap. Uh, again, reminder, this is before the Russia-Ukraine invasion that this bit of news had, or this new bit of a policy from the government had been put out so i guess what he's trying to do is make sure that people in the uk don't get hit too hard or even harder by the loss of flow of energy to the, the uk now one other thing with the energy side is that the saudis uh, can pump to bring oil prices lower and so uh, at the moment they're pumping uh, uh, they're pumping about 10 million barrels a day they can uh, increase that to 12 million barrels per day if they wanted to 
and that's then that will mean they'll be pumping at full capacity. Um, but the only issue is is that if they were to do that, that would really have an effect on crude oil prices. If you remember from yesterday from our EI, EIA inventories and release prep that was talking about, the more oil that is pumped into the market, the cheaper it becomes uh, when there's less demand for it and the less oil that is pumped into the market uh, that causes high demand, which would raise the price of oil. So Saudi, as said, Saudi Arabia could can uh, Saudi Arabia alone can potentially push oil prices lower because it doesn't pump out of full capacity of about 12 million barrels per day. Uh, it is, as said, currently producing around 10 million barrels a day. But, uh, and could reach full capacity in three months. So if there's, uh, if there's any willingness to do so, then that would uh, cause oil prices, oil prices uh, to fall and other commodities. So you'd also see natural gas prices seeing a decline uh, as well now why are we talking about energy prices um uh, so if we go to the next point one of the things that if we have a look at ing so their point of view what they say is that the war in ukraine uh, means that uk inflation is going to stay high for longer and is likely to peak at eight percent in april but could peak even higher later in the year should energy prices surge higher once more? So this is a key thing why energy is such an important, one of the important factors when we're looking at inflation data, considering when the markets are very volatile at the moment, that that could play into the hand if the Bank of England sees that energy prices are becoming too high and are having a longer lasting effect on the economy, then that may play into the hand of the bank taking a stronger a stance to combat the high, higher inflation and to try and use interest rates to, to bring, that, bring that level of inflation down. What, so what that could mean is that they could hike by a strong, they could hike by more, i.e. they could hike by 50 basis points at some point if needed. Now what ING do give here is a nice a little chart of illustra of an illustrative scenarios for UK inflation for, for year and year. So this is in regards to if we do see oil prices at $150 a barrel and and only falls gradually uh, and used cars again if people are buying more used cars of course with high energy prices they don't want to pay too much uh, petrol or let's say or for if you're in the US gasoline uh, for the uh, for the for their cars then that would mean uh, that one inflation as as they see here so in January by July looking around about eight percent for that. Uh, to, to occur even in the lowest scenario we're still seeing according to ing that inflation is to remain above or is to remain elevated at around uh seven percent from what we can see here and then you have in the summer or in, in around july where they see an, another peak to to potentially around nine percent uh in the in their median forecast of what they what they see so with all where gas and oil contracts currently are at the moment and that used cars see a slight reversal i.e. I. people are buying less used cars and they as I said still see inflation being quite high but not quite as high as the eight percent and then after the central bank takes further actions to hike their rates to bring that down then they see a, a more of a st more of a steep a steep decline in inflation rates so that's quite in interesting of what you kind of expect for inflation from the uk and that would add to pressure on on sterling where we would see uh, sterling see more of an appreciation as inflation goes higher because uh, the only reason for that for that would be is that there would be the expectation of the bank of england taking stronger action to bring that inflation more in control. Now, uh, we had comments yesterday as well from HS from the likes of HSBC, 
TD Securities, and also uh, comments from Goldman Sachs as well. So HSBC say that sentiment around sterling looks quite downbeat, but the Bank of England's meeting today may offer the currency some brief relief. I, whenever you hike rates, the currency would appreciate, and when, whenever and if you decrease the rate, the currency would depreciate. So just bear that in mind with the uh, data that we're, we're or the hike that we're expecting today. They say that a 25 base point rise is fully priced, so that so that's unlikely to have a notable impact on sterling, but the currency will rise in the short term if split of votes, and this is going to be quite key, if the split of votes on decision shows some policymakers bank, uh, backing a larger increase. And that was according to HSB Forex analyst Bunning who said that in, in a note, adding that we should see further calls for 50 base point hikes this week by some monetary policy committee members. And then we would expect uh, Sterling to see a bounce. So when we talk about the policymakers and the, the votes that we're expecting, and we'll go through uh, some of the expectations and the comments that Bank of England members had made, the prior report or the, the, the prior uh, rate decision that we had seen, there was a 5-4 split. So five of the members had wanted a 25 basis point hike, and then four of the members had wanted a 50 basis point hike. Now, again, bear in mind, that was before we had the Russia-Ukraine situation. So could that change more in favour of a 25 basis point hike today? It seems more likely considering this scenario, uh, the current scenarios that we have where inflation, excuse me, where uh, wages are not rising as strong, as strongly, or where we're seeing, where we've seen about 1% drop in uh, wage growth. And we'd also seen GDP, uh, which was uh, weaker than expected for the month, uh, for the quarter of, of 2021, for the fourth quarter. But again, you have inflation that is the key measure or the key point that the Bank of England is focusing on. So that would mean that we are looking for a 25 base point hike, according to HSBC. TD Securities, again, expecting a 25 base point hike and signal further interest rate rises are likely in order to stave off inflation expectations and a repeat of the February decision with the acknowledgement of two-sided risks from the war in Ukraine. So one of them being, of course, energy prices skyrocketing uh, overall from what we've seen in, in the markets. And then, then, of course, you have the other factor uh, weighing in as well about supply chain disruptions of goods being transported. Uh, and then, of course, the prices being raised to, to buy those goods if, if there's more demand for those goods uh, in, in the UK. Okay, so other than the energy side and inflation, and then we have Goldman Sachs, according to Stefan Bull, saying that substantial risks to growth do remain, and economists at Goldman Sachs adding that poorer households face significant hardship over the coming months and the cost of living crunch could lead to a more acute slowdown in consumer spending if people on, on middle incomes chose not to run down savings they had accumulated during the pandemic. So again, a bearish scenario for the UK economy overall from what's been presented on uh, the thoughts that are coming through from these investment banks. Uh, note that they didn't uh, mention the U Ukraine conflict there, just uh, just one of the things that they had, but just more more so, what does it mean for households? Okay, uh, next point, let's go. So the previous Bank of England statements and the rate. So going to have, so the, the split that we had, we had four dissenters. So we had Bailey, Broadbent, Cunliffe, uh, Cunliffe Peel and Tenrero, all voting for a rise to, or 25 base point hike to support 5%. While Haskell, Mann, Ramsden, and Saunders backed a 50 basis point rise to 0.75%. So that just shows you who we're uh, looking out for um, when we're considering that, that split in, in the vote. If we do get 
a, a similar split, if we do get similar numbers where we see a five foot split uh, for a hike, or for, for, you know, for a five being 25 base point hike and a four of seeing a 50 base point hike from other members, um, then we'll see a more of a hawkish or more of a bullish reaction from Sterling. If we were to get more voters, I uh, more of a majority of voters of members looking for a 25 base point hike to spot five at uh, spots seven five percent, then yes, Sterling would see an appreciation, but not as strong as a not a really strong appreciation if we were to get more of a split in the votes. Galaxy One, hey, good morning. Hopefully you're doing all well. So you're saying so a 25 base point would cause a seller for GBP. No. <laughs> so if the bank rate increases by 25 basis points, as expected, that would be uh, bullish for for sterling. And we'll kind of... Do you, do you remember yesterday with the FMC where everyone had priced in a 25 basis point hike for the Federal Reserve? Um, and then even then we had seen strong reaction from the rate decision do you remember that from 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 yesterday so i think what we could get if if investment banks are saying it's priced in then there and we do get a hike of 25 basis points um then i think we will we could still see potentially still see some sterling appreciation maybe not as much as the as when, when we had the federal reserve interest rate decision yesterday um, of course, there's more. Uh, there was a lot of risk, uh, risk on going around yesterday with the Russia-Ukraine conflict. But I think if we, if for some reason, if for whatever reason the rates remain unchanged at zero spot five percent, okay, then that would cause oh that would cause Sterling to see a depreciation. Right? That's the worst case scenario where you see the bank not being completely confident that uh, the economy is going to weather the effects of the Ukraine conflict. Two, there's the expectation that inflation could uh, slowly could abate by itself without the need for any further uh, rate increases or um, that the or that consumer spending will gradually pick up and um, and wages will also increase slowly uh, as well. So that would be very, uh, that'd be very uh, bearish scenario where they say that a rate hike isn't needed for whatever reason. Um, and we'll, so does that kind of make sense? So I think with a 25 base point hike today, I think we'll still see some appreciation from, from Sterling overall maybe not as strong as i said not as strong as the federal reserve yesterday maybe but there there is a potential uh, for sterling to still appreciate and i said if we get a a if we still get this split vote of five to four and some people are looking for and some members are looking for a 50 base point hike then that we will see an even further or stronger appreciation in sterling does that kind of clarify what, what that point there for you? Let me know if, if it doesn't, um, and I'll go go through it again. Okay, so uh, if we're looking ahead then, it's now the comments and the recent Bank of England member comments is something that's quite key as well, which could give us a, a hint or uh, an insight as to what we what we're expecting the split uh, what we're expecting the vote to be uh, to today as well. So uh, Cunliffe on March second said that the events of the last few days have led to an abrupt shift in our expectations of the future and increase in uncertainty. Tenrero said that events in Ukraine contribute to further upside surprises on inflation. So again, we had gone through the. Um, We've gone through that little image here that uh, the FT, uh, the ING had posted out of inflation remaining elevated and potentially reaching, in the in the worst case scenario, uh, at about nine percent. 
then we had Saunders. So Saunders, after the rate decision had occurred on February 3rd, oh, that rhymed. <laughs> uh, he said that his preference for 50 base point hike at the February meeting doesn't necessarily imply that he will vote for 50 base points as steps in the future, uh, in the event that rates have to rise further. Nor does it necessarily uh, nor does it necessarily imply a higher peak in rates than the yield curve used for the February uh, member of policy rates member of, uh, policy rates uh, forecasts. All else equal, uh, prompt tight prompt tightening now could, in my view, help limit the total scale of tightening that will be needed to re return inflation to target. Well, we got Galaxy One says, oh, I'm one of behind the live. So I think GPP will appreciate, but it could depreciate after like the USD did yesterday. Yes, yeah, so uh, ooh, that's a bit interesting that there shouldn't be that much of a, there sh shouldn't be much, much for the delay. So apologies on that. Um, I'll have a look into that later. If I, if I was to change the stream now, we we'll kind of lose this. So I think for now, we're just going to have to kind of carry on. Um, but yes, so... So Saunders could potentially be one of the members. Um, although he said he, it doesn't imply that he will vote for a 50 base point rise or 50 base point steps in the in the event that rates rise rates have to rise further. Could it mean that happens today? Well, there'll be one one person to watch out for and keep an eye on to see what what he says. Oh no, you were okay. You were delayed. Okay. All right. Okay, so it doesn't seem that that bad. <laughs> My stream is good. Awesome. <laughs> Don't want to miss out on some important stuff. Okay, so uh, Bank of England's man, uh, as said, was one of the uh, was one of the dissenters who wanted a fifty basis point hike. Uh, she said to me, "Hold on, sorry, one second. You can't see TikTok is getting in the way. I'll bring that up uh, later." So man said to me the data was uh, was still showing very robust expectations and I thought that it was important to dampen those expectations using a 50 basis point increase. So this is her commenting of course off the back of her of the back of her vote for a 50 basis point hike rather than a 25 basis point hike. So which in intent again another another member to keep an eye out for. Uh, as well from Bank of England, and then you had you had Governor Bailey saying that he's in the camp. He's in the camp of a twenty-five. This is on back to February the third, when we had the press conference from the Bank of England, saying that he was in the twenty-five percent or twenty-five camp because he thought it was wise to take it in steps or a incremental steps. And that the case for 50 basis points is clear. But for me, the 25 basis point call was not a close call. And it's about how to operate in a period of uncertain monetary policy. So we could see Saunders and Mann being the, the two people or the two members voting, maybe still voting for a 50 basis point hike uh, later on later on today or in about less than 30 minutes. But I think even from Bank of England's Governor Bailey, he does understand that there is uh, that there is well, the main thing being inflation being quite high, as uh, said so at nearly thirty years high, thirty year highs, that there could be a need, or that although there could be a need for a fifty basis point hike, although there was a need for that, um, to hamper or slow down uh, the inflation rate. And to bring it towards the two percent goal that the Bank of England uh, is looking to get it to, but it doesn't. He's not implying that he's going to vote for it. What he's what he's basically said here that there is more of an incremental increase that they or incremental rise of what he would be looking for in the rate decision. And considering with the Ukraine Russia conflict, when there is high uncertainty. And something that the Federal Reserve has highlighted before in, in the past, uh, well, yesterday as well, uh, about the uncertainty that comes from that with energy prices 
and how that could affect uh, cons uh, CPI and from off the back of supply chain disruptions. Um, that's one thing to that we'll be looking out for comment wise from the uh, statement of what the of what the Bank of England or what the Bank of England's take is on the Ukraine and Russia conflict. Now, I, I think it's, it's probably going to be similar to the Federal Reserve, uh, where they say it's as investment banks had pointed to, that there'll be some two-sided risks to inflation and to supply chains as well. Um, but I don't see... I don't see that as having a major uh, effect on Bank of England policy where they would look for a 50 base point hike. I, I would think it's more, as we'd said previously, it's more of a wait and see to see what the effects are on inflation um, and on businesses and the UK economy overall. So that's why it was important for me to show you and go through the energy point of view of what, what the government is trying to do uh, to try and uh, bring down or try and uh, remove the uncertainty from the energy market to be able to provide, uh, make sure that when the price cap does increase for UK consumers for energy, that it doesn't hit them too hard when energy prices would likely have to rise to factor in these the supply disruptions and energy disruptions that the market has seen so far so bailey again 25 base point hike is what he would call for and as said that's expected from them so the next point so market reactions when we had the last interest rate decision uh, what we had seen is about a 50 tick move towards the upside on cable and on euro G and then also on the FTSE 100 uh, index all we'd seen was about 24 tick towards the, the downside overall on that candle. So what we're expecting today, and that was when the rate was was hiked. So we're expecting a similar reaction from the Bank of England. A reminder before for this meeting as well, uh, markets were expecting the Bank of England to hike rates by 25 basis points. So that, and as of course that did happen, uh, then we'd seen that. Uh, appreciation on sterling initially we did see a bit of a drop uh, more of a uh, for, i think from there it was more of a buying the room and selling the news and then uh and then seeing that sterling appreciation so that helped to uh from the rate hike had seen that move towards the upside and a similar reaction on the, on the FTSE 100 uh, as well of what we had seen so if we go into the other so if we look at our deviations as well uh, keep an eye on on that. Let's bring that in. So not deviations. Well, of course, uh, deviations are kind of easier to, to see. But let's look at how much the other currencies had had moved by, and how strong the movement uh, was. So on the February third, with the the rate coming in as expected at a hike, at zero point five percent. We'd seen cable move, as said, 50 ticks, what, excuse me, 50 pips, whoops, <laughs> not ticks, 50 pips uh, towards uh, the, the upside. Euro GBP had seen about 28 pips towards towards the downside. GBP CAD, which had seen a really nice, strong reaction, had seen about 50, 59 pips towards the upside. It will show a little market replay as well seeing as we do have plenty of time till we get the uh, rate decision but here uh, cad had moved gbp cad is in about 59 pips towards the upside gbp jpy about 54 pips towards the upside and ggp and gbp swiss franc we've seen about 39 uh 39.5 pips or about 39 and a half pips towards the upside as well the FTSE 100 about 24 ticks towards the downside so remember, for currencies, when the rate is hiked in an expansionary phase, which we're seeing in, in the UK, we would see the currency appreciate and stocks and indexes 
would usually uh, tend to see a depreciation uh, uh, as well. So just to bear that in mind with the with what we're seeing at the moment and the prior reactions that we had seen from the FTSE 100, uh, seeing that negative reaction off of that rate hike as it did come in as expected, and GBP and sterling seeing an overall appreciation uh, across the market as well. Now, one thing that I also, so if we look at the reactions too, let's bring that up from the last meeting that, that we had and see. Okay, so currently we're looking at on, on here, hopefully you can see what, what I'm seeing. Is everyone clear so far on what, what we're expecting though today? Just, just to kind of clarify, so if we do get that hike coming in at 25 basis points, even though it is priced in, as was in the last meeting, we're still expecting potential. We're still potentially expecting sterling to see some movement towards the upside or appreciation in the currency, with the indexes or the index of FTSE 100 seeing a depreciation of that rate hike. Is that is that all, was that all clear so far overall? Hopefully that is clear for you guys. Um, okay, so let's play the reaction. So if we just let it play. Okay. So the one thing that I kind of wanted to note as well is, of course, with the initial move towards the downside that we had seen. That will come through on, on here. Galaxy one says, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So about 10 seconds until we see the reaction from the prior release. Okay. And boom, there we go. Okay. So Sterling, see that initial pop towards uh, the, the upside or overall. So a bit of a move towards the downside and then uh, it pops right back up. So you see that initial move towards the upside and then that huge wick uh, being formed there. But then overall, it does uh, appreciate in value off of that expected uh, expected rate hike. Jose, Jose Luis Calic uh, says, yep. Okay, good. Good stuff. Okay, so again, um, FTSE did see that uh, and did see that initial move towards the downside and then a pop towards the upside. Now seeing that move back towards the, the downside here. Uh, excuse me, back towards the upside on Sterling and Sterling strengthening. That's GBP USD. Let's bring up some of the other ones. Euro, oops. GBP CAD. Okay, again, seeing the appreciation there on Sterling. <clears throat> okay, so as we can see, it did. Uh, it's, it's still holding on to its its gains for, for sterling and we've seen that continual depreciation on the FTSE 100. So I also want to show you, so the aftermath of what we had seen after about two minutes or so um, is again, uh, sterling did see that continued depreciation. But if we look at, so one of the things that I did talk about briefly earlier on is if we uh, don't get that expected hike. So if we go back to where the rate uh, remained unchanged. So back in November, when the markets were expecting, hopefully you guys can see that there. So when the market expectation was for rate hike back in November, about for about 15 basis points uh, in a hike to 0 0.25%. And when that didn't happen, hence the reason I'm saying why if we do get the rate remaining unchanged for whatever reason, when 
everyone was expecting a rate hike from the Bank of England. And then we had this surprise where they didn't. We'd seen the we had seen sterling see a depreciation and a sustained depreciation in from that uh, unexpected from the unexpected hold on rates so just bear that in mind as well for whatever reason i don't think that's going to be a plausible scenario if the, the if the if bailey said that increments of 25 basis points is uh, the way he he would want to go and was and what he'd also mentioned back in uh, February, uh, back in February at, the, at that meeting that he did see 50 basis points, but he decided to take more of an incremental pace. I didn't see the rate being rema- remaining unchanged uh, for this meeting. Maybe there could be, uh, according to some analysts, where they could see a pause in July of of the rate, where they would have. Uh, where they would hike the rate by uh, by about to one percent, uh, we may see a pause uh, there in July. But I think at this moment now, uh, one of the key things to just to be aware of is that they need to bring inflation down, and uh, by hiking the rate today by twenty five basis points is the way to do that. As said, you hike the rates, you control, you have more of a handle on inflation, and then you hopefully can bring it back or the bank is hopeful that they can try and bring it back to the two percent goal at some point okay Ooh, it's kind of holding that so you can still see even after about four minutes or so sterling still strong overall still seeing that movement towards the upside didn't really uh move back hasn't did see some selling uh, going on or, or a bit of a, or a little bit of a reversal but overall still seeing the movement uh, towards uh, the upside so if we go back to some of the other comments too because i want to have a look at the traders and what they're expecting as well uh, from the bank of england so you had on march the 3rd that traders uh, move forward bets of 125 base point hikes to November. And one of the, the one of the reasons being why it's been moved, why it would have been uh, moved, moved forward, is that by then they're hoping that the uh, the Ukraine conflict would, would end, or well, way before then. So the market and so the economy would be able to, uh, first of all, the global energy supply would come back to normal. At, at, before that happens and um they would uh, and they would also see supply chains not being as dis- as well as as disruptive and everything will kind of go back to normal so before that you had again it was more of a mix from traders bets uh, of what we had in the recent days where initially they had postponed about what postponed 100 base point bank of england rate hike bets until the 20 20- until 2023 from December. Uh, you also had on that same day that interest rate futures show 91% chance the bank will raise rates to 0.75% in March, down from a fully pricing rate hike earlier on Tuesday. But now that that has... So you can see the chop and change because of the Ukraine conflict and how other central banks are seeing it as a risk uh, it's it's causing these uh it's causing the the markets to price in different rate hikes here and there left right and center but overall so we have the investment banks looking for 25 basis points of hikes um so yeah just just to correct that so yeah so again interest rate features shows about 91 percent chance of the bank to raise rates by 25 basis points just just bear that in mind to 0.75 percent uh, today okay so that should be clear even the markets are looking for a 25 basis point hike overall from what we've seen so just be aware of that there what else do we have so we also have the median expectations for inflation in two years time to be at 3.2 percent that's still 
above the 2% inflation goal. And they'd seen, this was the inflation survey, attitude survey. Uh, and that's up from 2.4% in November 2021. So seeing a more elevated inflation from the UK economy. So we've got about 12 minutes left. Um, we know, as said, the bank is going to raise their rates by 25 basis points. And then again, here you've got a poll not too long ago, actually about a couple of days ago, that the bank is expected to hike by 25 basis points, according to 44 or 49 economists. Um, still, if we go back to the reactions too. So yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, still pushing up. And I think from what we've seen in the past with a rate hike, uh, we could potentially see a similar reaction again uh, today. Okay, 10 minutes left. Finished uh, slightly early with the prep. Does anyone have any questions or, or, or thoughts or anything they want me to kind of cover off again in the presentation that we had? Are we all kind of clear of what to expect for the uh, for the from the Bank of England uh, to today? Okay, so actually, I do want to disconnect from this from this here. Uh, well, let's let's, rec let's reconnect to our um, to our live data. So let's get that set, set back up. I'm going to close that. So no, it can be a little bit temperamental. Where you actually try and look for the live react uh, live a uh, live feed, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. Can you explain the importance of votes again? Yes. So the importance of votes. Now, if we get a split in votes where some members are, we see uh, some members out of out of the nine, let's say a five four split, uh, where we have members looking for a twenty five base point hike, but then the other four members are looking for a fifty base point hike. What that means is that even with this current scenario of the Ukraine-Russia conflict going on and more uncertainty occurring in the markets, the Bank of England is, is still quite hawkish. And when the Bank of England is still quite hawkish uh, in, in their view of the economy and they're putting the Ukraine conflict uh, aside, that could potentially uh, lead to uh, a stronger appreciation from sterling as you'd expect uh and then so so that's one point so if there's still if we still get that split of five four where we see members still look for some members still look for 50 base point hike we'd see a stronger appreciation on sterling but if they do factor in with the current Ukraine conflict that, that we're seeing that if there are those uncertainties and we get more members looking for a 25 basis point 25 basis point rise rather than a 50 basis point rise then sterling would uh, still see an appreciation but it wouldn't be as strong uh, as we would uh, expect it to be if we had more members uh, if we had more members looking for a 50 basis point hike so if there's so if there's more uncertainty with the members of where the bank rate should go or if it should be higher if it should have been higher today then we'd see some more uh, or some increased volatility and increased uh, sterling appreciation and see the FTSE 100 see a stronger depreciation but if we see the Bank of England uh, if we see the Bank of England more inclined to a 25 base point hike, then we won't get too much volatility coming in, uh, but we'll still see some uh, some appreciation from sterling. Does that kind of make sense?
we do have time, so I can, uh, if, if you if if you want to, I can go over it again. So remember the, just the on that point as well. Um, before I just bring it up, let's see, let's have a look. Okay, good. All right. So just remember, we had a four dissenters: Haskell, Mann, Ramsden, and Saunders. Uh, the main ones that we kind of want to look out for, I think we might get, what we could see today is a 7-2 split, where we see Saunders and Mann, uh, maybe even an 8-1 uh, vote for 25 basis points, uh, or 8-1 eight, eight vote where we see uh, everyone looking for a 25 basis point hike, but we may get a man who was who is looking, uh, considering what she said in before, that we could get a 50, or she could vote for, still vote for a 50 base point hike. Do I trade today? At the moment, so the main thing is, it's prep for, for you guys. That's what macro race is, is about. Um, of course, that takes a lot, a lot of time <laughs> to uh, compile the, the resources and compile the bits of information that we, that we need to uh, look at. And then, of course, it'll be reviewing what the Bank of England says. So, um, what, what, what the, what the effect is so it's going to be uh that'll be very difficult when i'm trying to do, when i'm trying to do that at the same time <laughs> to be able to do that uh, so no there won't there won't be any trading trading today but as i said more of a prep a prepping you guys as best we can um for for the rate decision and for any other releases uh, as well okay uh what was the, what else do i need to bring up um, okay let's bring up our current contracts um june for, for the c and that is not what I wanted it to be. Okay. Said. Okay, it's better. Okay, let's bring up another one. Bring up your GBP. Also, I want to bring up uh, GBP CAD. I think that's going to be it's considering considering um, we have the oh yeah. So when we say that, so 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 this, so what we mean is that it's more of a prep for for you guys uh, for the for the trade. So a live trade prep. Is was what we what we mean when we say Mac race live trading prep. Was that in the description? Where where have we seen that? <laughs> I don't see that in the description. I see maybe that's on on our side where we kind of need to edit that a, a little bit more from us. But yeah, but if 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 you're taking that as we're going to trade live. No, it's gonna be more of a prep for for you guys. Um, uh, considering we also want to look at the other impacts of what the release has had. Okay, so that's there. Let's bring up. I said I want to bring up GVP Cat too. Considering that I had seen more pips uh, compared to GVP USD. Oh, for the future. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Apologies, I took that in in, in a different way. Okay, yeah, that that could be that could be something. Um, I guess I think that the main thing is once we once we build up the service more, uh, and you know we get another another me another Tony, you know, uh, uh, doing the the service too as well. I think that could be a possibility. Um, again, it's more. Is more for what you guys think and how how you how well you think the service the service is running, and is that something that um is is it is it worth doing you know or does it you know does it make sense is it going to work, um so that's something that we ooh, that's a bit difficult to see we don't want that well, that's a bit hard, uh let's bring that down a little bit actually, okay so about a minute left to go now actually or less than a minute well about less than two minutes. 
which I might just bring that here. I think we're just going to have to look at GBP CAD uh, after the initial release has happened. But yes, it could be a potential thing. So I appreciate that. A bit of feedback there um, for, from you, Galaxy One. That could be a very good idea. Uh, but again, I think it's more just kind of building up the service first for you guys. Make sure you like it and like what we do before we take any sort of further steps with that. GPP CAD. Okay. So I think what I want to do is... Okay, so we got that there. Let's turn my sound off for myself. Okay, less than a minute to go now to get this expected 25 base point rate hike. Okay, not too long left to go. 10 seconds or 10 seconds to go. Okay, that's a hike there. That was a hike there. Oh, we are. Okay, seeing some negative moves on the cable. So what are we getting headline wise? Because that's going to be quite interesting to see what we can see here. Okay, so we had so eight of the MPC voted to raise the bank rate to 0.75%. Cunliffe voted to hold the bank rate at 0 percent So I think this is what's caused caused uh, Sterling to see a depreciation here. So Cunliffe being one of the voting members looking for a hold on the bank rate. Now that's a bit of a surprise um, of, of hence why we, hence we can see this uh, depreciation. So we got eight to nine. So we had eight people wanted to vote for, uh, eight members wanted to vote for a hike. And then one member, Cunliffe, uh, wanting to vote for uh, for no change uh, on the for for the rate, so I think this is what's uh, again caused this uh, reaction where one of the members has decided not to uh, raise raise the rates or did not want to raise the rates, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, one of the other things we want to see as well. So the if we let's see, it was footsie. Let's bring that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other comments too. So, inflation at around uh, eight percent. In, in the second quarter is what they're expecting and they're it's, it's expected that may climb higher later. What else do we get from the Bank of England? So again, 8 to 1 majority to increase the rates by 0 0.25% to 0 0.5%. Uh, kind of wanting it to stay unchanged. Also, uh, underlying normal earnings growth estimated to be above pre-pandemic pre pre rates and expected to strengthen. Inflation expectations remain well anchored at present and will monitor very closely. What else do we have here? Uh, what else? What else? What else we got? What else we got? So let's bring that in. But yeah, I think the key thing there, the surprise of kind of wanting to leave the rate unchanged, uh, is what surprised the market here. Even though we got that hike. So it's more of a, a dovish hike is what we could see it as uh, from, from that point of view. So Cunliffe, well, he said he placed great weight on very material negative impacts on household incomes from higher commodity prices. So the Ukraine 
war, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict uh, weighed in on his sentiment quite a bit, enough for him to say, well, look, we've got to keep rates where they are. Um, because we because we don't know what the we're not too sure of what the effects are, effects are going to be on the economy. GDP is expected for Q1 GDP to rise by around 0.75 percent quarter on quarter, whereas in February they're expecting it to be flat. That's the so Q1 for 2020 uh, 2022. A majority of MPCs said policy should be tightened to reduce risk pay uh, risk pay trends. Or inflation, uh, or inflation becomes embedded. Right. So that was uh, crazy. <laughs> Whoa! But yeah, my man Cunliffe causing some uh, volatility there. <laughs> uh, also, BOV said the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is likely to exasperate supply chain disruption. What else have we got? So, okay, so initially on cable, wow, okay, so it's about 62 pips is what I can see from, from, from there towards, towards the downside. Uh, let's, let's see, what's that deviation, what's the deviation, so about, uh, let's go over here, 62 pips down. Right. Should we move that out of the way? Let's see the, the better. There's 62 pips down. Let's look at GPP CAD. If we did get that strong reaction from GPP CAD. What? <laughs> 83 pips down. Whew. Oh, heck. <laughs> 83 pips down, GPP CAD. Let's look at Euro GBP. Yep. Seeing the appreciation. Okay. That's about 34 pips towards the upside. Wow, so not as strong as, first of all, cable itself. Pip wise. Let's look at GBP JPY. You're on GPP JPY short. Okay. Yeah, so let's so have a look how many ticks we got. Excuse me, pips. We got to the downside. We got about 83 pips. Around 83 pips towards the downside off of that uh, surprise vote. A uh, vote figure that, that we had got from the, uh, from the MPC. Okay. 83 pips down. Let's look at the GBP Swiss franc. If I do go quiet, I'm just plotting this one. Yeah, for you. About 64 pips towards the downside. 
on GPP Swiss franc. And the footsie. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> GPP and Z. Yeah, let's actually let's have a look at that. Yeah, GPP and Z. This was going to be interesting to see. Also, let's take a look at the GP, uh, GBP AUD as well. So the initial reaction from, from there. Wow, about 96. Jeepers. Jeepers. Cunliffe, what do you do, my man? Why would you do that to the, to the currency? Okay, so... GPNZ for 96 pips, or 97, let's say. Or we can see that on the initial candle. Um, okay, and GBP AUD. So what else what are you bringing us? There we go. Got 92 pips towards, towards the downside for GBP AUD. Oops, not currency, pips. Yeah, about 92 pips towards, towards the downside. All right, so let's summarize what, what we've seen overall. Uh, then um, that gives you, if I kind of go across, so the rate had been hiked as expected, but the voting or the voting members, again, that was quite key, where Cunliffe was the only member to say that he wanted the vote, the, the rate to remain unchanged uh, from, from his side. So from that from that vote to to remain unchanged, we had seen that depreciation in sterling. So what that tells us for the Bank of England, for uh, for the future as well, from what we've seen here today, if we do get, uh, here we go. So um, just seeing some other headlines that traders erase bets on a single half point Bank of England rate hike by June. So that's been... That's been a raise, so looking for 25 basis point hikes. But even even then, so if we get one, even one member, voting member, looking to either uh, leave rates remained, uh, leave rates where they are, or if they're looking for, um, or if we're if they're looking for more of a hike compared to, to everyone else and that's going to create some volatility or extra volatility volatility what we've seen here for cable and also from the deviation from the or the way that the currency pairs have moved uh, we've we've seen that that reaction there so one voting member saying no I want to keep rates unchanged causes caused a bearish reaction on on cable excuse me, non-cable, on sterling uh, overall to see a, a bearish reaction uh, across across the market for sterling. So if we, if we're presuming this scenario, if we do get, if we do get the same thing again, I think we could see a move towards, uh, another move towards the downside if for the next meeting from uh, the Bank of, of England, if Cunliffe surprises the markets uh, again. Also, just bearing in mind some other comments too. If we're looking at Euro GBP, I think we had some not comments coming through as well. Uh, not says he doesn't rule out two interest rate hikes this year. That was about 14 minutes ago. So as the statement was released from the Bank of England, we had not saying he doesn't rule out two interest rate hikes this year. So going back, going to the ECB, of course, asset purchases, the timeline has been reduced to uh, from 
leaving APP at 20 billion euros in October to leaving asset purchases or the asset purchase program at 20 billion euros uh, by June. So a shorter, a quicker time frame from the ECB. But here, uh, if I just add it into the sentiment as well, because that, I'm just going to add in Saunders. Oh, Cunliffe. I have another word, uh, another name for him, but I don't want to say that. <laughs> let's, uh, okay, let's have a look at some of the other. Another chart. Okay. So we're looking at the, I think, so trading means got a nicer view here on the FTSE 100. So there we go. Eight o'clock seeing seeing that appreciation the FTSE and that moved towards the upside there we're counting if we're looking at the amount of ticks that had occurred uh let's let's bring that up let's have a little check there we go so it's on the initial candle seen about about 33 ticks towards the, the upside Again, off of that, off of the, off of that rate, off the voting, uh, or that rate decision. Okay. So. Yeah. So the FTSE is still going higher. Sterling still weakening hasn't really clawed back I think one thing I want to do is have tick strike open to see what we're kind of getting if we're still getting uh, any of those any movements any more movements from from sterling okay well we're still seeing still hearing some tick strike coming through about some selling that that's going on moment kind of wait to see what happens okay Ooh, i feel i've lost my video where are we where are you guys there you are let's chat all right um well so we had that we had the rate coming in as expected but then again canliff voted to keep the rate unchanged had caused uh, st uh sterling to move to see that depreciation any questions so far any any thoughts did how how was everyone on on that trade what did you feel prepared um for for that for the trade was that what the was the information useful that the, i provided because then we had that surprise too <laughs> as well Galaxy One, how how are we doing on your on, on your trade? Are you still are you still uh shorting GPP JPY? Let's kind of see where we are. Alrighty. <laughs> so I will okay, it's just one other thing today as well that yeah, that's that's already been we've gone through that there. Alright, okay. Um thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I pre positioned myself for GP USD one one three two. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> It's quite tight. Okay. Um, all right. So 
um thank you very much for for joining if there's any questions that you guys have what i will do is as always uh, you can email me at financial juice now we had dp short on 156 jfk short 156 that's 15613. Okay. All right, cool. Oh, right, okay. That's, that's quite cool. It's quite nice. Um, yes, yeah, so if you do have any questions for us, uh key thing is if you want to stay up to date and be able to understand how how releases work and what to expect, then if we if you guys uh sign up to the mailing list if you haven't already done so you can sign up there and i'll be putting out uh, next week's week ahead friday night uh for for you guys to be able to prepare yourselves for the week ahead tomorrow we have canadian retail sales at 8 30 a.m uh, or 8 a.m eastern time is when we'll be when we will be starting that prep for you there also as well, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at uh, and 